we need to talk about functions. So if we look at this code here for setting up a servo, what you can see here is we've got the on start block here which is going to zero our servos automatically and we've got a get out of jail free reset servo um, on button B which is basically automatically does this um, manually does the reset to zero um, on those two there. But down here on button A pressed we've got something that's a lot more complicated. We've got some variables, those are the red blocks, and we've got these call blocks here. And what these are, these are function blocks. We're calling a function, and in fact, what actually means here is that there is a program inside that function block that allows us to um, do things, much more complicated things. So without giving too much away, if we scroll to the right here, we can see that I've made a function called touch2 and this is the code for touch2, the function called touch2 and it's a particular action that's been programmed and in the block here it means that I can call or that this blue block here call touch2 is calling all of that code there. So why do we use functions? because it means if my block of code is not working properly I can isolate a whole block of code I can pull that out I can pull a whole lot out of this stuff this whole if block out if I want to but I can call that one function block out and it would isolate all of this code and it means it's much easier for you to debug using functions and it's easier for you to read through your, the logic of a block of code that's going to be required to work from a direct action and isolate the individual functions and then clip together a bunch of functions. Um, basically if we read this we've got uh, an option here to visit um, three, repeat three times um, to go through this pick a function called touch, pick a function called two, pick a function called th uh, touch three and they've been given a numerical value which is a random variable and if the computer depicts number one it's going to run random one here is going to go to touch one if it picks two it'll do touch two etc etc and it'll go through that loop three times so let's get into it and explain how functions work so let's get back to something that's much simpler here I've downloaded the Kitronic motor driver which is a simple block and I've written a program that basically says when the button A is pressed we want motor 1 to move forward at speed 20 and we want motor 2 to move forward at speed 20. But how do we stop it? How do we control it? And that's how we can use a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to use button A to call the function and we're going to use these two blocks to describe what the function is. So if we come down to advanced and we click on functions, we can make a function. Now the best thing about a function is you should try and name it for the action that it describes. So I'm going to make a block called move um, forward and click done. So here's my function called move forward. And I've made another block here and I could just put that into here and I can now call that function by clicking on this block here and clicking on button A and it will call this function. And all it's done is replaced exactly the same function that we had earlier on. But we can now begin to control this. We can control this with um, duration. And we can do that with a variable. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to set how long I want to be able to control my motor to move or my motors to turn forward so I can control how far my um, robot will move. And we can do that in combination with some variables. So let's make a variable called forward time. Let's 
call it duration to then get okay, okay so there's my variable so what I want to do now is I want to build a function and I'm going to set my forward duration to zero and what a variable does is it allows us to give something a value and variable means something that varies or something that changes and we want this to change at a set rate and so what we're going to do is we're going to put a loop in now so these are going to this this function now says set forward duration to zero turn the motors on and just keep going but we now want to put a stop function in and we can use that with a variable and we're going to do that with a loop so we want to repeat a certain number of times a counting function with forward duration and we can do that with a um, variable block here that says change forward duration by one so if we start at zero and repeat four times it will go through this very quickly and keep counting up until it reaches the number four because we're asking it to change forward duration by one so if we go from zero and we um, go to the next number it goes to one and then it would go to two to three to four until it finally stops because we started at zero but now we can actually put some a time function into this if we come to the top here we can click on pause and what we can do now is we can now treat this like a clock so if we click on this drop down list here half a, a half a second is 500 milliseconds so if we put 1000 milliseconds in or one second it would count one pause for a, th a second repeat the loop and so we could make our motors turn forward till um, uh, it reaches four but it will just keep counting it will just, it will just keep the, the, the motors won't stop we need to add another action so we can do that with an if function so come across to logic over here and put a function in here so it's going to do this four times and if it reaches a number so logic put an equals value and we want a variable value if forward duration drop this into here equals the value four so again what we're doing here is let's just repeat make sure we understand what's going on here we set a variable called uh, forward duration moving forward a set number of time we set the motors to run and they'll just run forever we're going to repeat four times and we can change this we can make it 10 or 100 or 1 or 2 we want it to change by 1 and so this this whole function would take four seconds to run through it's going to go from 0 to 1 wait a second go from 1 to 2 wait a second go from 2 to 3 wait a second go from 3 to 4 and wait a second and it will stop but now we're saying if forward duration equals 4 so it's going to be checking each time we want it to do something and what we want it to do now is to stop the motors so we can now click on here add those two blocks in we want to turn motor 1 off and we want to turn motor 2 off but we might want to use this block again so we now need to set a um, uh, set our variables back to zero again so now what we're going to do now is set forward duration back to zero so we've now got a complete loop and so what we'll do now what, we, what happens now is when we press on button a it calls the move forward function and the move forward function is much much more complicated and it allows us to do things like this we cut we could now come back to pause pause for a second or half a second and we could get it to do the uh, come back down to here to functions we could call the move forward function again or we could take this out put a loop in and put a, its own repeat in and so this would now do its own repeat it would do this function four times with a half second wait between each function 
and this is how we can build functions. We could now build another function called go back. Click done. And so now we can now build this and we can go back into here. We can set motor direction to reverse, etc, etc. And this is how we can then start building our function blocks using variables.